Hey there guys and welcome back to Unjaded Jade. Long time no see. I feel like it's been a little like forever since I've sat down and just done like a chatty revision video. Yesterday I sat down and I just wrote out a list of all the study videos that I want to make and I started planning them. I felt like this is a really important one so I really do hope you find it helpful and I need to apologise for my croaky voice. I went to Oxford over the weekend to visit like Eve and everyone and I went clubbing and I lost my voice and it's still not really come back so apologies. But today I want to talk about one of the revision techniques that I think is most underused. I feel like people don't often use past papers and mark schemes to their full potential because in reality think about it like what is more helpful than questions almost exactly like the questions you're going to be asked in an exam test to see where you're at and stuff like that and during my time at school i feel like i did come to nail how to use past papers and mark schemes more effectively so yeah i hope you find this useful okay so the secret to past papers and end of chapter tests and using them effectively is all in how you analyze them once you've done them getting things wrong is literally the most normal and okay thing ever. Like it is not about how much you knew, how what you got right, what you got wrong. Instead, it's how you learn from what you did get wrong. So whether you got two things wrong or whether you only got 50% in the paper, it doesn't really matter. It's all in how you analyze it after. So my biology teacher, who is a true legend, um, she coined this way of analyzing past papers which i really want to share with you because i think it's really important so it's basically called marks like m-a-r-c-k-s each letter stands for a potential reason that you lost a mark so marks is based on the fact that there are always going to be different reasons as to why you didn't get a question right was it because you didn't know the answer like you didn't you just didn't know it like your revision wasn't potentially solid enough, you just didn't know the process well enough, you couldn't remember the right key term, did you not understand the question, which is a different issue because if you look at a mark scheme and you're like, ah, oh, like I literally did know that, but you just couldn't understand the question, then that is, you know, another issue. Was it that you understood the question, you, you kind of knew the knowledge, but it was one of these awful science application questions. Did your maths just go really wrong? So these are some common issues you can have. And so marks, M stands for a maths error. So you didn't really understand the maths, you got the maths wrong, you made like a little error. A is for application, so this is more to do with science. Maybe they gave you some awful scenario which you just kind of didn't understand. You know that you do know the knowledge, you do understand the knowledge, but applying it to a foreign situation you struggled on. R is for read the question. Did you know everything, understand everything, you were able to apply your knowledge, but you missed a key term in the question, such as explain rather than describe, or just some kind of reason that you didn't get the mark because of how you interpreted the question. C is for communication, and this is basically just science, particularly biology, where you might know exactly what you need to say, you understand the question, you understood the application, you did everything right but the wording that you used to communicate the thoughts that you knew didn't get the mark so this is for very specific mark schemes and it's basically just a pain because it's a lot harder to fix and this kind of comes from just doing a lot more practice and more past papers to kind of understand what the mark schemes want. K is knowledge. Was your knowledge just weak? Do you need to go over this topic that the question was on about? Did you just not know the process? And S is for statements. So for example, if it was a four mark question and you wrote two points, maybe you thought you wrote four, but in reality you did only write two and kind of waffled on to fill the space. We've all done it. Even though you got the marks for those two points, then you know that you needed more statements based on the number of marks of the question. So every past paper, I did an A level, every end of chapter test, I would go through the whole paper once I'd done it and once it had been marked and 
Whenever I lost a mark, I would instantly look at it and be like, why the hell did I not get this mark? And then I would write next to it M or A or R, C, K, S, one of those. And then I would go through the paper. I would tally up the number of like a number of M's, the number of A. If I find that I've got loads of maths errors, then clearly I need to do more maths practice. And then the most important bit of using a past paper is to then write yourself a little note of what you're gonna do now. So based off of this, you know what you've done wrong, you know what you need to improve on, you know what you need to revise, write yourself that note and be super specific on what you want to go over, what you need to revise better, the kind of questions that you need to practise more. It just basically gives you this little game plan and it's so specific because the paper is literally telling you what you've done wrong. And obviously, because I did mainly science subjects, this is kind of more science focused. Like, oh yeah, I need to consolidate this process. I need to try and revise this bit again. But this is applicable to any subject. If it's an English essay, like what did you not include enough of? Was it your terminology? Was it not specific to the question enough? Do you need to go over key terms and literary devices? Try and be as specific as possible in writing yourself this note for what you're gonna do next. And then whenever I would analyze a past paper, I'd always come home and put it straight on my to-do list to actually do whatever I had said that I would do. Cause it's so easy to write yourself like, oh yeah, I'm gonna do this. And and just never do it. Okay, my third point is, now that you've analyzed your paper, if you don't understand something, go and see your teacher. Particularly at A-level, your teachers literally just are your friends. Like, go and see them, make use of them. It's not embarrassing, it's not shameful if you don't understand something. Yes, I somehow came out of A-level with three A stars, but that's not because I understood everything there and then, it's because I didn't understand a lot of things, but I went and asked until I did understand. So yeah, go see your teacher for help, ask a friend, just basically make sure that you understand the things you didn't. Don't you dare do that classic thing where you're like, oh yeah, yeah, I'll add it to my list of things I don't understand that I'll go revise later. Like, oh yeah, when the exam comes, then I'll revise it. Like that is, really not very wise. And if you don't get it now, you're not gonna get it then unless you actually put in the grind. <laughs> effort now saves future you even more effort. Number four, if you did really badly in a paper or an end of chapter test, ask to do it again. Go through, analyze it, re-revise, whatever, and then just do the paper again. Almost certainly, you're gonna do better. Even if you're remembering the answers or if it's an essay and you've already kind of got all the thoughts in your head of what you want to write, just do it again. Like you're not losing anything. It's not like cheating. If anything, it's just developing better exam technique. Get your teacher to mark it again for improvement's sake. If anything, they'll probably really appreciate that you're putting in the effort to do it again as well. So yes. Number five, um, this is something particularly good for sciences, but make a list of common questions. Based on papers, you can definitely collate some common questions and their common answers. For example, in biology, they're always gonna have to somehow ask you to recall the names of like, a bond or list the advantages of this adaptation. And whether it's a new spec or not, you can spot these patterns and pay attention to the specific wording of those mark schemes, just so the next time you do a paper, you're actually likely to say what's gonna be on the mark scheme. Finally, number six, all these things that you've learned, all these specific things you got wrong, the wording mark schemes, etc. Reword those things into the notes that you are going to learn. If this whole time you've been saying the word narrow, but oh no, the biology AQA mark scheme wants you to say thin, go back and change narrow to thin. And that sounds really stupid, but welcome to AQA biology, the specificity of mark schemes. Yeah, just make sure that whatever you are learning is based off of past papers, because that is the thing that is most likely to get you marks. And I hate this whole thing, which is just like, oh yes, I need to memorize this so that I can just get a tick off of a mark scheme. But unfortunately that is the nature of our exam system in the UK and most places around the world right now. So I do hope this helps in some way. Do as many past papers as possible. Write as many English essays, write as many history essays. Do maths papers, do past paper questions from your textbook. 
print them off, print them off, go back to like 2007 and just do all the papers up until now. This truly is the secret between getting an A or an A star at A level, for example. Let me know if this helped in some way. I'm sorry if my voice is also <laughs> croaky. Also, you should have seen me before I filmed this video. I was just chucking all the rubbish out of the background. I have so many manky clothes everywhere here now, out of shot. But I am actually going to Winter Wonderland now, which is really exciting with my friend. I also combed up my eyebrows today. I think it looks fancy. Bye.